for this? Are you kidding? It's either this or let Jeffrey take me and Coop back to England, and that's just not going to happen. I won't let it. Do you really know what you're doing? Are you kidding, Buzz? I've never been more rehearsed for anything in my entire life. Great, go to it. Oh, now I'm really ready. Let me at him. Give me a piece of cake. Remember, he's as straight as an arrow. Well, I'm counting on that. <laughs> it's showtime. Oh. Dear, dear Matt, here I go again, writing you another one of these letters, the way I do every day that you'll never get and you'll never read, but it makes me feel closer to you helps me. It's been eight months since I saw you. It was summer then. And now it's spring, soon to be summer again. It's beautiful here. I can see the mountains from my window and the lake. Sometimes it reminds me of our lake, but not really. You know, it's really very different looking at something that's so beautiful when you're by yourself. It's, it's almost, it's almost painful, really. But anyway, I'm getting a lot better. I, I can see, I can see the world. And I can use my arms and my, my hands pretty well and the doctor says that if I keep on responding to the medication the way I have been, that maybe I will be able to get out of this damn wheelchair and walk by myself. And you can't imagine what that thought is like. And Michael, remember he's my physical therapist, he says that someday that the two of us will take a walk by the lake and I say to him that I will have to be walking very slowly. You remember how much I hate doing anything slowly. <laughs> remember that time I scared you half to death? When I was driving so fast? Well, I mean, I had to, because otherwise we were going to miss Bill's soccer game at the high school. But, ooh, ooh, did you get mad. <sighs> of course, I knew it was just because you loved me so much and you didn't want to lose me. Hey, Slugger. What's up? Me. Now that I have company. <laughs> Glad you could make it on such yeah. short notice. Yeah. The hospital's screaming for the new plans on the way. We gotta get moving on it. Well, I've got nothing better to do. Anything to help me keep my mind off heart. That fight you had with heart still got you down? Yeah. Just had to open up my big mouth and, well, you know the rest of the story. You know, Dinah, I don't think this is nearly as big a deal as you're making out of it. Really? Well, then why didn't Hart call me last night? Hmm? I would have been understanding and patient in all the things that you said I should be. I understand, Matt, about Bridget taking Peter and not telling him and, and, and why he was upset. I do, but he still, he had no right to take it all out on me. Well, I'm going to do everything I can to get you out of your funk today. Thank you. You want to get them? I'll yes. go get the rest of the plans. Sure. Hi. All I'm saying is just have Joshua call me when he checks in for his messages, Wanda. Yes, I know you will. Okay, thanks. I am going to wring Annie's lying little neck. Abby. Hi. What are you doing back so soon? Are you okay? Oh, I have to study for my PA classes, so I took the afternoon off. Uh, hey, did you find Josh? No, he took the kids and went off somewhere, and nobody's picking up the phone at Cross Creek, and I don't know where else to look. Um, well, at least you know the truth now that Annie's not your sister. I know. I just can't wait to be able to tell Joshua if I can only find him. It's so frustrating. I know. It must be. But once you do find him, you guys are going to be together for the rest of your lives. I know. And then Annie's going to be exposed for the liar that she is. 
I'm the one who called you from the car phone. Where's the doctor? Dr. Levine's with a patient. He'll be here as soon as he can. Well, he better get here fast, because this woman is pregnant, and she is in excruciating pain. Oh, are you bleeding? Oh, a little spotting. I think you should take your wife to the nearest hospital. No, no, no hospitals. Maybe, maybe that would be the best. Alan, I told you, I won't go. I wish you would. Oh, please, God, help me. Don't let me lose this baby. Please, God, don't let this happen. No. Nurse, do we have to do that now? The doctor needs as much of your wife's medical history as he can, especially I'm, since he's never seen her. I'm, okay, what do you need? I'll give it to you. I'm sorry, I don't even know your name. <sighs> Johnson, Leslie Johnson. If you could give me the name of your OB, Mrs. Oh, Johnson, we'll get you... Oh, the pain is getting worse. <laughs> Go get the doctor. Can't you see my wife is in pain? Dr. Levine will be here as soon as he can get someone to cover for him. But he better get here as fast as he can. Just take a deep breath, Mrs. Johnson. I'm going to take your blood pressure. And then we'll check the baby's heart rate. Already. I know this is an awful position to put you in, you know, treating a pregnant woman that you've never seen before. Just take a deep breath and try to relax. Yeah, but my uh, husband and I are from Kansas City, and we were here visiting relatives. I never expected this to happen to Just me. keep lying down. This is a Doppler. The gel is going to feel a little yeah. cold. Let me lift this up. Okay. All right. Just, just... All right. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Mm. All right. It's going to be okay. This Doppler will record the sound of your baby's heartbeat yeah. as soon as I can figure out its position. All right. When it does, I can hear it through the headset. Do you hear anything? Not yet. Here, give me those. I want to listen for myself. If you'll just give me a second. Don't worry. I'm a nurse. I know what I'm doing. Mrs. Johnson. You should be quiet, okay? I don't hear anything. Where is it? Where's my baby's heartbeat? You know, I didn't think you were uh, gonna be I here. I thought that, um, sorry, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just, I was just gonna say I wasn't expecting to see you here yeah, this morning. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the same thing. Matt didn't tell me you were coming. So, uh, what are you doing here? I'm helping with the plans for the hospital. So am I. Did he call you or something? Yeah, yeah. Did he call you? Yeah, he did, but he knew... Uh, he knew, he knew what? Well, he... He knew about us. He knew that we had a fight. Mark, great. Glad you could make it. Hey, Matt. Hey. How are you doing? Well, hospital board's chopping at the bit for us to get finished with this project, Excuse so... Me. Excuse me, Matt. Could we cut the chit-chat? You called me and Hart, and you had us both come here today, even though you knew that we had a fight. Yeah? Yeah. At the same time, to the same meeting. Yeah. Playing Cupid could be very dangerous, Matt. You may live to regret it. So, did you get some rest? Oh, yeah, I did. Uh-huh. I got a little rest. Uh-huh. Have you and uh, Cyber Boy been discussing the great poets? No, we haven't. We've been discussing the obscure symphony director. So don't <laughs> call him Cyber Boy. Oh, I'm sorry. But if you don't start getting some decent rest, I'm gonna have to work you that much harder to tire you out. You don't scare me. That I'm not doing my job right. Are you up for another little game of catch? No. Listen, I want to work some more on my legs. Oh, really? Yeah. What, are you tired of watching those skiers out there? Want to start joining them? I do. Say, do you ski? A, a little. Mm -hmm. I thought you were an athlete. Yeah. You look like one. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do I? But I would have said that basketball is more your game. I, I, I played some. Yeah, in college? I can see it now. Big, tall, handsome. That was actually in, in, a, in a high school. I, I, pre med kept me too busy in college. Go ahead. Pre med? You wanted to be a doctor? What happened? I, I mean, you have to ask. Do you know what kind of hours you have to put in to finish med school? It's ridiculous. Oh, I see. You're one of those frivolous types that'd rather spend your evening with the pretty girls. How'd you guess? Because I have to guess everything about you. You don't tell me anything about what you did before you came here. Okay, uh, push right here against my leg. I am. Against my, uh, against my hand? I am. Good. 
harder. Well, could push it. You're really getting to be push a it. slave driver. You know that. Yeah. Well, listen. I thought you wanted to ski in the next Olympics. I just settled for it. walk by the lake. Don't you settle for anything. You keep going for the gold. I mean it. Whoa. Did you ever stop pushing people? Look, it, it's my job to push people into doing things that they don't think that they can do. Sound like my husband. Can I switch legs? Yeah. Thank you. Oh. I'll assume that's a compliment. Yes, it is. It's the highest compliment. Huh. He was a slave driver? No, no, not really. He was just very sure of himself. He has a he has a very sure, clear sense of what's right and what's wrong. And you know, he didn't mind bucking the tide. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I felt stronger just by being around him. You're not exactly a wimp now. You should have seen me before. I wish I had. Yes, I'll be right with you. Oh, there's no hurry at all. Uh, how may I help you? Uh, I can't thank you enough for squeezing me into your busy schedule, Judge Hopkins. I, I'm sorry. Um, do we know each other? Oh, forgive me. I'm Jenna Bradshaw Morgan, Jeffrey Morgan's wife. Ah, yes, Mr. Morgan. I believe I met him it's the other day. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Well, um, Mrs. Morgan, uh, could you tell me exactly why you uh, stopped by to see me? Do you mind if I make myself comfortable? I uh, don't know, no, please. You're so kind. <sighs> now, where were we? Um, I, I believe I just asked you why you were here. I don't know where my head is these days, forgive me. <laughs> well, as you are aware, my husband Geoffrey came to talk to you about, well, us leaving the country to go back to my homeland, England. Yes. Sir. Have you ever been to England? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I studied there for a year once in Oxford. Oh, well, then I need not tell you how homesick I am for my homeland. <laughs> you know, the green hills yeah. and the heather. As a matter of fact, I could have lived quite happily without all that fog and rain. Moors didn't do much for me. Yeah. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Morgan, I do have a lot of... Oh, I won't take up much of your time. You're absolutely right about England. It's not the place, it's the people that count. They are what make the difference. Uh, for instance, Geoffrey's dear old mother. Uh, did he tell you about her? Oh, yes, yes, he certainly did. I have a picture of her somewhere. Oh, silly me, I'm not wearing any pockets today. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Morgan, <laughs> I can't I... impress upon you how important it is that we leave the country together so that we can go and be with dear old sick mum. She's all alone, there's no one to look after her. Uh, yes, that's, that's really a shame. Uh, Mrs. Morgan, I will tell you what I told your husband. I am taking the case under advisement. Well, I don't mean to be pushy, but do you have... Any idea when you might make that decision? Well, if I'm able to get back to my work without any further interruptions, I should have an answer for you by the end of the day. Oh, by the end of the day. Oh, that's wonderful. I can't tell you how pleased I am that I got to you in time. In time for what? Judge Hopkins, my husband is a businessman, so it's rather difficult for him to deal with emotional situations such as the situation with his mother you see it's difficult for him to express his feelings and the need that he has to leave this country and to have me beside him as I have said before it would mean a great deal to me if you were to rule in my favor I can be ever so grateful in fact I could probably be grateful in ways that even you don't know are legal you know what really gets me? Is that I was ready to give up the most important person in my life to that witch. Here, I want you to drink No, this. I don't want to drink it. Please, it will make you feel better. No, the only thing that's going to make me feel better is Annie Dutton's head on a platter with a big old apple shoved in that lying mouth of hers. Oh, Reva, I haven't ever seen you so upset. I'm not upset. I'm just going to kill her. I'm going to pull out that forked tongue of hers and boil it for breakfast. Reva, those are very strong words. Abby. I was ready to give up my life for her. Yeah. I was willing to walk away from the only man I've ever loved in my life, spend the rest of my life without my kids, wake up in a bed alone, dreaming about the life I could have had, and she knew it. Well, she knew that, and she used it against me. She knew that I would sacrifice everything for the love of my mother. She knew it, and she did it. She held on to Josh that way. 
At least you found out in time. <sighs> you know, I've done a lot of things in my life all in the name of love, but I've never stooped that low. And the thing that, that, that really upsets me is that I worked so hard to feel something for this person. Mm -hmm. The minute Mama told me that I had a sibling out there in the world somewhere, I felt a connection. I felt a bond with this person that I'd never even met before. I mean, it didn't matter what she looked like. It didn't matter what she sounded like. She was a part of me. Well, that is because you are a very giving and a very, very caring woman. I wanted her to have a happy life, a good life. And that would have been good if that had been the right thing, but it wasn't. And then when I saw the cameo and I knew that my sister was Annie, it was like a knife in my heart. And it was so confusing because I didn't feel anything for that woman. I prayed for the strength to, to, to find something to love about her. And I'll tell you something, there wasn't very much. I know, but you see, you tried because you are a good person and you trusted her. Oh, she's out there somewhere, Abigail. My real sister is out there. And if I hadn't wasted so much time thinking it was Annie, I might have found her by now. Annie and her schemes. Annie and probably Alan, too, sending me looking for stupid clues. Wait a minute, Alan. You you think Alan I don't know? Was I don't know. I, I can't be sure. But when I was over there, when I was at Annie's, Alan showed up, and I wouldn't put it past him. She couldn't have pulled off the charade by herself, and I just am such a fool for having fallen for it. Well, now wait, wait. You could not have known that those clues weren't real, oh, right? Oh, Abby, I should have said something. I should have been sharper. But there was no way for you. They to conned know. me. They Sh conned me. Oh, me, yeah. Reva Shane, and my mama didn't raise any fools. Listen, you are not a fool. Just calm down and listen to me. You were trying to be a good daughter, and you took Annie into your life, and there is nothing to be ashamed of about that. Just calm down. She is the one who should be ashamed, because she is the one who has been hurting you and lying to you. I don't think she feels the least bit ashamed. Well, she must, she must be feeling something, because she's tried so hard to hang on to Josh, and now everything is falling apart for her. You think she would be upset, wouldn't you? I mean, Josh has even left her, and she had the nerve to deny everything right to my face. I don't even think I rattled her cage at all. I can't find my baby's heartbeat. Mrs. Johnson, please relax. What is going on? Did you check the fetal heart monitor? What's on it? Nothing's happening there. Uh, well, it doesn't take long, does it? Sometimes. Well, is it there, nurse, or not? Mrs. Johnson, please try to calm down. Sometimes it takes a little while to find the heartbeat. You have to know exactly where to place it. I'm a nurse. I know what I'm doing. You don't have to tell me. Dr. Levine, this is my wife, Leslie Johnson. <clears throat> not doing too well. No, not really. Where are you experiencing pain? Here. I'm having cramps. She's been cramping for several hours now, Doctor. Have you had any spotting? Yeah, yeah, now, and I had a few weeks ago, but I had it checked out, and they said everything was fine, so it still has to be fine, Doctor. All right, I'm going to do a sonogram, see how the feet is. Oh, great, great. Here, take this. I like sonograms. They'll, they'll show everything. I really trust them. Mrs. Okay. Johnson is a nurse. Now, this is going to be a little cold. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where is it? Where's my baby? I'm done. It's right here. It, is, everything is going to be all right. Hmm? When was the last time you felt your baby move? Well, about a week ago, I had I had some feeling, you know, like a fluttering feeling, but I didn't know if that was the baby moving or not. But I, I know, because I've read a lot of books, that's, that's perfectly normal. There's something wrong with that. That's correct. So what is it, Doctor? What? What do you see? I haven't found the heartbeat yet. Guiding light in a moment. Would you like a few minutes with your husband before we discuss what's no, going on? No, there's nothing to discuss, Doctor. You made a mistake, that's all. Mrs. Johnson. No, you didn't try hard enough or long enough. Or maybe you just don't know what the hell you're doing. 
this baby is probably in a posterior position or turned around or something is in its way. Or the machine. When's the last time you had this checked? Sweetheart, nurse? sweetheart, I think. Don't I think, tell me to come down because I don't want to come down. Panicking right. is not and I know going to help it takes anything. It's a long time to find a baby's heartbeat. I know that. And that's with this baby. This is more I, difficult than I think than with the doctor's help, everything is going to be fine. Here. So you keep looking. And I want you to keep looking until you tell me my baby is alive. Do you hear me? The only thing that I want to hear out of your mouth is that this baby is healthy and living. Yeah, Mrs. Johnson, please relax. We're going to get some more equipment and check things out, all right? <sighs> Okay, so we're in agreement then. The activity room gets moved from the north to the south side. Dinah? Hmm? The activity room? Oh, yeah, whatever. That's like a good idea. That sounds like a good idea. <clears throat> Hart? Yeah, I mean, put as many windows as you think we need. <laughs> you know, this is really ridiculous because I'm the only one doing any talking. It makes any sense anyway. Uh, you know what? My hand's not in this today. I'm sorry. This is my fault. Yeah, I can see that you're not quite there. Well, to tell you the truth, I, uh, I haven't been able to do anything this week because... Well, Dinah told you that we had a fight earlier. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she told me. I haven't been able to do anything either. No? No. It's, um, it's been awful, actually. <clears throat> well, you know, you took off so fast at a company. I, I tried to catch up to you, but you were gone. You did? Yeah. And then I, I must have called you for two or three hours, but the phone was busy, and so... Really? You, you tried to call me? It got late, and I, I just went to bed. Oh, well, you know, my father called last night, and I guess I was on the phone with him longer than I realized. You know, I, I think I'm just going to leave you two uh, Moment for a minute. I'll be right back. Look, Dinah, I, I, uh, I really want to apologize for, for yesterday. I mean, I just hope you accept my apology. No, yeah. I mean, I want to apologize, too. Um, everything that comes into my head just flies out of my no, big no, no, mouth no, no, sometimes. No, 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 this, this was my fault, okay? I, uh... I blew this whole thing way out of proportion. You did? I did. What a relief. And, I mean, here you thought it was all your fault, the fight, and, oh, I just need to get my, you know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he helped to calm me down the other day. I was, I was a little crazed after our argument. <sighs> just this, us being apart doesn't feel right to me. You know? No, I hate it. I think I'm crazy, right? You can see why I got angry with Bridget. I mean, she took Peter yeah, halfway across of course, the country. I understand. I mean, I, I don't think that what she did was a big deal, but I understand how you felt. Wait, wait a minute. You understand how I felt, but you don't think it was a, you don't think it was a big deal? Well, no, I don't. I mean, I, I, I was wrong, and I'm really sorry for forcing my opinion on you when you were so upset. I should, I really should have been more sensitive to your mood, but. Right or wrong, you feel the same. Right or wrong, right. Dinah? Right or wrong? I mean, you always have to take everyone's side but mine, don't you? Uh, young lady, uh, I will not be bribed by sexual favors. Now, uh, if you were... I would never dream of doing such a thing. What are you doing? That, that, that's my door. And what a door it is. Mrs. Morgan, this is extremely inappropriate. Oh. Well, I'm hurt that you should think of such a thing of me. I am a lady in the, in the true sense of the word. I just want you to know that I would be very grateful to your kindness forever. Come on, Bradshaw. Work your magic and then get the hell out of there. Hey, handsome. Want a date later? I, well, no, my hands are sort of full right now, but thank you anyway. I'll keep your hands busy for you. 
Get over here, Gracie. Come on, let's go. Bradshaw, come on. You're just supposed to unnerve him, not kill him. No. Oh, Oakdale's worst nightmare is back. <laughs> And little does Lucinda know... Something happened as a result of our little... She's in a world of trouble. No more secrets. No more lies. Caution, Lucinda. There's danger ahead. No! 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 This week, as the world turns... Okay, this is half a day's take is my work. I'm giving it to you. You better make it worth my while. I'm always worth it, honey. Just show me when and where, and I'll take care of the house. Just offer him your services. I don't think I'll let it go any further than that. I want to bet? Just don't take no for an answer, okay? Whatever he does, just don't like a love him. I can swing it. His name is Jeffrey. Go, go, go. Hey, honey, remember me? Oh, baby, it's been such a long time. I know you said that you'd tell him to call me, Matt, but I just don't want you to forget. It's urgent. Thanks. Reva. You are going to drive yourself crazy. I know, I know, and I'm doing it to you, too. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I just don't know what to say. No, there's nothing anyone can say. I just need to hear from Joshua. Well, when, when you do find him, he's going to be very happy. I don't know. I don't know. He may think that I'm nuts no. when I tell him that Annie faked being my sister. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I hope he believes me. He will. He is going to believe you. I hope so. But the whole thing is just so bloody outrageous. And with Annie being pregnant and denying everything. Well, what about Alan? Maybe you could talk to Alan and no, he'll tell you No, no. Alan's much too experienced a liar. I just need some evidence so that I can prove that Annie's been lying. You don't think you have enough evidence to prove this to Josh? Oh, I don't know. I hope so. I just, I'm just trying to make some sense out of all of this. I just, you know, even with Alan's help, I, Annie needed other people to help her pull this off. Like who? I don't know. I, I mean, she doesn't have that many friends here. Oh, wait a minute. What? What? Who are you thinking of? It's, it's someone you know. It, it's it, th that Fran, that Fran, the one that you got the job at Cedar. She was at your engagement party. Fran Rich. Oh yeah, that's the one. I mean, I remember Annie really freaked out when she caught me talking to Fran one night. Oh, she, you know, she could probably shed some light on what's going on. I, I don't think so, Reva. Fran is a really nice person. I don't think she would be involved in something like this. I mean, I don't think she even knows about it. Annie and Fran are old friends. Old friends trust each other. And if Fran. If Fran does know something, maybe she does. I mean, maybe, maybe she does know what's going on. Maybe she knows something about this horrible game that Annie's been playing with our lives. The doctor will be right back. He just needs to get another piece of equipment. You see, Annie, everything is going to be all right. Now, are, are you still in, in pain? This baby isn't dead. Annie. I want you to know that you're a very brave woman. And don't forget that you're not going to be alone through this. I will be here no matter what happens, Alan, all right? Alan, stop talking like that. This what? baby's going to be OK. It has to be. Of course, of course. It's going to be healthy and happy. Everything's going to be just fine, Annie. Yeah. Huh? This baby is very important to me. Oh, I know it no, is. No, it's not just because it's a way to hold on to Josh. This is a human being. Inside of me. A little boy, a little girl who's going to have hopes and dreams of his own one day. In my body, my body is the only thing that's protecting him. Everything that I I have. What, what if it's me? What if I can't do this? No, what if Annie, something's Annie, wrong with me? Annie, it's not you, darling. It's not you. I love this baby. I don't know what I'm going to do if anything happens to him. All right. Let's hope for the best, all right? All right? Okay. It's going to be good news. Now, look, you're going to make this baby a wonderful mother. Now, the doctor's going to come in here with some better equipment, check you out, and let's just pray that everything is going to be all right, okay? All right? Come on. It's going to be just fine. Oh, here he is now. 
All right, Mr. Johnson. If you'll lie back, we'll see if this sonogram gives us any different reading than the last I'm one. I'm sure it will. Why don't you just throw that other sonogram reading out? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Wait. What do you see? No. <laughs> no, keep trying. Doctor, come here. Keep trying. This is a child we're talking about. We're talking about my baby, okay? Keep trying. I have a nursery half built. I have two stepchildren who are expecting a little half brother and half sister. You know, I have a husband who is waiting for Andrew, me. Andrew, would you take Mr. Johnson out of the office while I do a doctor? Maybe no, you asked something here. Yeah. Right out here if you need anything, all right? Mm -hmm. This way. Okay, get on with your examination. Let's go. I'll examine you after we talk. No, let's go. There's nothing to talk about. Once you examine me, you will find out that my baby is perfectly healthy. Let's go! The exam is only going to confirm what I already know. Mrs. Johnson, I asked your husband to leave the office because I was afraid that it was too hard for you to accept the truth with him here. The fact is, there is no fetal heartbeat. No, no. I'm very sorry to tell you, Mrs. Johnson, but your baby died. No. Heartbeat. Isn't there any chance? You're a nurse. I'm trying every way I can to tell you. Uh, uh. Mrs. Johnson, I'm very sorry. But your baby is dead. I know this child means a lot to you. And you're suffering a great loss. It's okay to grieve. So that's it. That's it. You're telling me it's over. Don't let one setback disappoint you. In all probability, you and your husband can go on having as many healthy children as you want. Yeah. As far as treatment goes, your pelvic exam showed that the cervical loss was closed. I'll have to do an induction with a Pitocin drip at the hospital. You, you want to overnight. You want to induce labor now? Yes. My recommendation now is, is induction of labor. Otherwise, serious infection might set in. You don't want this turning septic on you now, all right? So take care of yourself now. Get this over with. I'll clear my schedule so I can go with you. I'll be right back. I do understand you. I do. Oh, you understand me? It doesn't feel that way, Dinah. But you know what? That's nothing new. That is not fair. I, I always think about what you want. Always. Yeah, always, unless you want to think about what you want. Okay? It's a very small group of people that you root for. In fact, yours is the only name on the list, I think. Well, that's just a cruel thing to say. Cruel? Thanks a lot. Cruel? Yes. Cruel. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you, and you ran off with these idiots from Europe. Oh, That's no, cruel. we're not back That's to that cruel. again. You made such a mountain out of nothing. Okay, kids. All the time. Time out, time out. What? Uh, 
Come with me. Just, we are huh? settling something I, here, I, I know. I just need your help for a minute. She's right, no. man. We need to get I, I'm sorry, but you know, this is only... You know what? This will take a do minute. Do we have to do this now? And then you can do whatever it is that you two do. Come on. I think you have me <clears throat> confused with someone else. Oh, is Jeffy Boy too embarrassed to admit he knows me in the cold light of day? Honestly, I don't know you. <gasps> oh, you know me all right in a good book kind of way. Well, uh, thank you for paying me this uh, little visit. Uh, Does Mrs. this Morgan. mean that you're going to take me up on my offer? Uh, no, it means that I have made a decision about your case. Oh, I do hope it's good news. Uh, well, that depends, Mrs. Morgan. You see, you should know that I was prepared to shorten your probation in order to let you go back to England with your husband, but now I think you should be fortunate that I'm not throwing you in jail for solicitation. Oh, my goodness, what about my husband and his poor sick mother? Your husband may return to England to look after Mumsy. You are not going anywhere except out of my office now. <gasps> oh. Last time, just leave me alone. I don't know how you know my name, but just, <laughs> just, just get oh, the hell away from me. Oh, I'm going to miss you, Jeffy boy. Saturday nights won't be the same without you. <laughs> Judge Hopkins, it's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, Mr. Morgan, I, something told me that I would see you this afternoon. Your Honor, I, I don't mean to press you, but my, my mother's health is declining. Uh, terribly sorry to hear that. Yes, you see, that's why it's, it's very important for my wife and I to return home as soon as possible. And I was wondering if you've come to a decision on Jenna's probation. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Oh. Mm. The answer is no. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought, uh... No, no, you see, Mrs. Morgan will not be leaving this country now or any time soon. I see. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> Could you just help me carry a few things in the house yes, a minute? Yes, fine. Just hurry up so that I can go home alone. If that's what you want, yeah, I want you to back off. And Could you just help me carry a few things in the house yes, a minute? Yes, fine. Just hurry up so that I can go home alone. If that's what you want. Yeah, isn't that what you want? After you. Matt, what are you doing? What are you doing, Matt? I'm sick of hearing you guys fight. You get into makeup kill each other or figure out a way to spend some time alone without a stupid argument. Uh, Life's too short, guys. This is ridiculous. What are we going to get accomplished in here, Matt? Use your imagination. Hey, wait, wait. Where are you going? I'm going to go pay Annie's good friend, Fran, a little visit. Oh, Reva, I don't think Fran is involved in this, you know. I, from what I know about her, she's a very honest person. Wouldn't it be nice to think that there was one of those left in this world? Look on the bright side, Abigail. If Fran is as good a person as you say she is and she knows something, then maybe she's having a hard time covering up for Annie right now. Maybe she's ready to toss that weight off her shoulders. I'm really worried about you. Are you going to be okay? I just want the truth, Abby. I want the satisfaction of having someone admit to me that Annie is lying and having a blast doing it. And once I get the proof, ha <laughs> ha, I can't wait. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, Ellen, I'm... I'm coming. for them to pick up their heart my baby's heartbeat i mean but you but you heard you you heard the heartbeat there was a heartbeat oh, yeah it was loud and clear so, so the baby's fine everything right everything is fine in fact i'm ready to go let's go right now oh i can't tell you how relieved i am uh, annie uh, i was i was scared to death there for a while me too yeah. but you see alice 
Everything's fine. Yeah, it's going to be fine. I'm not going to lose the baby, and I'm not going to lose Josh. No matter what. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Of course. This has been Guiding Light.